Cruz.
It is ruled a no contest. No contest. Passion on a foul from Jack Sharkey. So that's another way. Yeah, you might be that the he's effective with that punch, and he can land quite a few of them. We might start. Baseball team back in action trying uh, to get the sweep against Georgia. A chilly day for baseball and Vol fans inventing ways to stay warm this afternoon. Todd Helton on the mound for the Vols in his first start since 1993. Looking good early. He had seven strikeouts on the day. Georgia does get to him later. The looper into right field and no one's going to catch it. A run comes home. The Bulldogs have the early lead 1-0, but the Vols come back. Scott Shruffle at the plate. He hits the shot up the middle. That scores Ray Espinoza and Bryce Christensen. The Vols go on to win the game six to four. Todd Helton, so he picked up the win. Former Vols, James Littleman Stewart and Ronald Davis, they were taken in the NFL draft yesterday. Now some more of the Vols have been drafted today. In the fourth round, Aaron Hayden was selected by the San Diego Chargers. He was the 104th player chosen overall, and for Aaron, He's just glad that it's just all over. I was just relieved that it was over with. I mean, waiting all day yesterday and seeing some backs that was ready behind me, go ahead of me. I was just ready to get called. It was just a relief that it's over with. Aaron will leave for mini camp on Thursday. Now other balls selected. Ben Talley, he was picked up by the New York Giants. That came in the fourth round as well. And Jerry Colquitt. He was selected by the Carolina Panthers in the seventh round. Now, that's good to see. Also, Billy Williams was chosen. Now, you may ask yourself, what will the Vols do without those players who have departed to the NFL? We got a preview from yesterday's orange and white game. One guy who's really come on strong this spring is running back Chester Ford. Now, he ran for 30 yards on just two carries. He got two touchdowns as well. Look at him right there. Looks like he might be the early favorite to start at running back this fall. It's competition, and uh, right now I guess I'm number one going in, but uh, I have to take the offseason and use it towards my advantage and come in doing a, a regular season to get number one spot. Chester was on the victorious side of things yesterday. The Orange won the game 4-3. to three. Well, NASCAR, they traveled to Martinsville, Virginia for the Haynes 500, and currently they're under a rain delay. We'll have the final results tonight at 11. The NBA is finally winding down. The playoffs are just around the corner, and thank goodness. Today's action, Orlando at New York, Pat Ewing in street clothes. So that means you get it inside, and you get it to Shaq. Shaq just dominating inside. He gets the foul there. John Starks and the Knicks, though, they had a different philosophy. They said they'll go for the threes from the outside. There's Starks hitting. He buries it. The Knicks stick with their shooting philosophy. Starks again for three. The Knicks pull away from the Magic. They win the game 113 to 99. In other action, it was the Bullets over the 76ers. The Bulls, they drop it to the Bucks. The Hornets are currently leading the Cavs in the fourth. Indiana over the Hawks. It was the Spurs over the T-Wolves. The Suns were winners as they beat the Sonics. Last night, finally, George Foreman was back at it again. The 46-year-old facing Axel Schulz, who was 20 years his younger. The fight was not pretty. Foreman's left eye was virtually closed at the end of the fight, but Foreman did retain his IBF heavyweight title. He won a majority decision over Schulz. And this may look a little different than you might expect. No rollerblades because it's street hockey. Seven teams competed over on the UT campus this weekend. Competition was tough. Winners will receive T-shirts and trophies. All the equipment for the games was donated by Nike. And the good thing about the whole thing is once the games end, Tennessee's intramural program, where well, they get to keep all the gear. Looks like a top sport. Yeah, it's, it's a little different without the uh, rollerblades. That yeah. kind of threw me off. You get the headgear <laughs> and everything, they need them. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, thanks. Well, coming up next, today's drizzly weather put a damper on some people's outdoor plans. Good day to be indoors. But coming up next, we'll show you some cyclists who braved the rain for a good cause. Right now at Fowler's Furniture, we have a small problem. During our renovation, we have limited space and lots of beautiful new furniture and accessories on the way. See the problem? Lots of furniture, little space. So we're having a sale with savings up to 70% to make room for all the new styles on their way to our newly renovated store. So while we clean up, you can too. 
Fowler's Furniture, proving once again, every time you look, we look better. Every lawn lover the whole world over is as different as the lawn they mow. That's why Snapper has created a piece of equipment that's perfect for every lawn, no matter what size or where. Snapper, creating the most beautiful places on Earth. I stopped by my Cadillac dealer and looked at the new DeVille. Impressive. DeVille's the roomiest front-wheel drive luxury car in the world. I like that. Only DeVille has the airbank system to help protect all three front seat passengers. That's good. And DeVille's only $4.89 a month with $1,800 down. That got me excited. I looked at the competition. Current Cadillac owners take this to heart. See the Cadillac dealers of the South. WIVK's Will Hyde and Wall. This week on WIVK, you could win $15,000. It's easy. Just put your radio on WIVK. That's 107.7 FM. Then listen Thursday morning at 7.15. We'll announce it. Now. We'll announce the birthday in this envelope. Right now, if it matches yours, you could win 15 grand. WIVK, today's new country and birthday bucks. You could win 15 grand Thursday morning at 7.15 on WIVK. Where do you go? <laughs> Buick owners now get a special loyalty bonus throughout April. Make your best deal on a new Buick, then Buick's loyalty bonus will save you even more. See your local Buick dealer. Coming up tonight on 6 Eyewitness News at 11, we'll have another live report from Oklahoma. The search for more suspects in the bombing intensifies. We'll have the latest. And in HealthCast, tis the season for sinus sufferers, I know that. Allergy season poses special problems for people who depend on clear nasal passages to make their living. We'll let you know about a, a doctor of country music stars and how he treats his patients. These stories and much more tonight at 11. Well, the rain didn't stop some cyclists out pedaling for a good cause. Sure didn't. About 100 people showed up to ride in the American Diabetes Association's annual Tour de Cure. Now, the rain did keep some people away, but as you see here, others didn't really have a problem riding in the rain. The bike tour started at South Doyle Middle School. Then they moved on to one of three bike trails. All of the cyclists had sponsors to raise money for a good cause. We try to educate people concerning diabetes. A lot of people out there don't know that they have diabetes. And a lot of the money goes to research because we uh, fund uh, major research trying to wipe out the disease. By the way, TV6 is a proud sponsor of this event, and we found out today that riders raised $11,000 to fight diabetes. Yeah, cleaning up, and the streets look cleaner, too, with the wet <laughs> pavement there. With all the rain, sure. certainly. That's the latest from 6 Eyewitness News. Thanks for joining us here. World News Sunday is up next. We'll see you back here at 11. Have a safe night. When you can't watch 6 Eyewitness News, you can listen. Tune your radio to 87.7 FM for a continuous simulcast of WATE TV6. guys not afraid to make the tough calls we save lives that way now it's about personal injury lawyers and what we can't do because of too many lawsuits i didn't take this job to sit around and worry about getting sued if we don't stop lawsuit abuse i might not be able to do my job and my job just might be to save your life fight lawsuit abuse and protect your right to sue for common sense legal reform call 1-800-670-2682 2.9% financing for 24 months, 4.9% for 36 months, and 6.9% for 48 months. Now available on all models of the Accord V6. This just keeps getting better and better, doesn't it? Hey, I never said it would last forever. So go see your Honda dealer. Tonight's Super. On your mark, get set, go. Don't drag your feet. America's Funniest Home Videos is a full hour. So get ready, but don't take all day. Then Capone, Dillinger, and Bonnie and Clyde come back to life. No! And when Clark has to fake his own death, no. Lois has to fight them all alone. 
William Devane guest stars on Lois and Clark after America's Funniest Videos. It's all tonight on WATE TV6. If you missed it the first time, catch it on the sports machine tonight. In Oklahoma City, President Clinton leads the nation in a day of mourning and the process of healing. At the home of a material witness, federal agents find the ingredients to make a bomb. I'm with the Knoxville Police Department, and we're going to do a series of shows here uh, over the next month dealing with uh, the police department and some of the things that are ongoing. And with me today are uh, Sam Rivera, who is one of our officers and has been here since 1986. And to his left uh, and on your far right is Alvin Lynch, who is one of our new officers who just graduated from the police academy uh, about uh, two weeks ago, right? And we're going to be talking about uh, what they're doing now is Alvin is right out of the police academy, uh, having spent uh, 21 weeks in training, and now uh, Officer Rivera is his FTO or field training officer. And Alvin, as with all of his classmates from the academy, are spending time with, I guess, senior officers, even though Sammy doesn't look that old, uh, senior officers to learn about uh, police work. And I guess let me start off uh, by asking you, Sammy, what exactly is the FTO program about? That's pretty much a follow-up on what they've learned in the academy. We try to reinforce the training they had there and apply it to actual street experiences. Alvin, uh, what have you found to be the most interesting part of uh, police work thus far? Thus far, Foster, um, I guess dealing with people on a day-to-day -day basis and uh, the different phases that people go through as far as uh, how they handle everyday situations and us trying to solve everyday problems. When you went, let's talk about your background. Where did you work before you came to work at the police department? I was a deliverer for um, Eagle Distributing, Budweiser. Uh huh. And, and so you, you filled out your application, came to work. When did the academy start? It started November 14th. Okay, and you were in there 21 weeks. What was the most fun part of the academy as far as you were concerned? I believe it would have to be riot training. Riot training. Yes. Yeah, the day where you all went out and it was cold and had the SOS, our special operations squad, throwing eggs and tear gas and everything else. I remember that day. It was cold and miserable. Um, as you're out on the street, and I know it was exciting uh, on your first, what you work, a night shift the first time out? Yes. Uh, what was the most memorable thing about that shift, or was it pretty mundane as far as you were concerned? Well, it was pretty mundane, as you said. We didn't really do much. Mm -hmm. But um, it was the fact of being out there, riding in the cruiser, and uh, being on... Uh, Getting that adrenaline yeah, the yeah, first time. Yeah, being behind the steering wheel instead of behind the blue lights. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sammy, what, uh, when, when you take these young officers out, what are some of the things that you look at every time you go on patrol? Well, I look to see if they're... Uh, I mostly we try to concentrate on officer safety at first, because, I mean, th even though he's inexperienced and all, we want him to be careful. Try to uh, see if they, uh, just their demeanor, the, how they posture themselves, how they, their confidence level, and how they carry themselves. This is an important part of the training for a senior officer to watch. And don't you have rating sheets that you're supposed to, how many points are on that rating sheet that you're supposed to be actually looking for? Uh, I'm, I can't remember off the top of my head. There are at least 20. There's probably about 25 to 30. They're called uh, those rating points. Mm -hmm. and on a daily observation report, and each one uh, has a certain category that we judge their performance on, and uh, it's either an acceptable or not acceptable level, and uh, that's uh, we do that every day, and then we we'll see where the officer is lacking, where his good points are, and where his weaker points are, and then we go from there. Well, Alvin seems like he's a pretty well-rounded well guy. How's he doing so far? So far, he's on. The, he's uh, he's doing fairly well. That we haven't. Uh, Got to see all the uh, things in the category yet that, that we were great on, but so far it's, it, everything's coming along at uh, the right time, right speed. What, Alvin, when you were going through it, everybody's got strong <laughs> points and weak points. What do you think your strong and weak points were when you were in the academy? What did you enjoy and excel in, and what were some of the things that maybe you had to work a little harder on? Well, I believe my uh, weakest points um, was knowing exactly how to um, fit the laws for the crimes and how to charge for the the crimes committed because there's so there's so many uh, different crimes and some of them intertwined. Uh, as far as uh, my strong points, I believe that um, defensive tactics area and uh, the tactical areas of entry buildings and like I said, uh, we had a good time with the riot 
riot control, the physical aspect of the academy was, I guess, my uh, my stronger point. Yeah, well, you're in great shape. What were some of the things that y'all did when you were in the academy as far as the, the physical training or the PT went? Well, we did an awful lot of running. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually got to eight miles one week uh, running. Uh, we did a lot of push-ups, a lot of sit-ups, a lot of mountain climbers. Uh, we did up-downs, uh, uh, just various types of physical uh, training, try to build our endurance. Are you going to try to keep that up? I mean, I know they talk about that after you get out of the academy, keep up your training. I know Sammy, since he's a boxer, mm -hmm. keeps his training up. Are you going to try to do that? Yes, I think it's very important for me to try to maintain um, a good physical status because you know you're doing a lot of running and the people out here that you're you're trying to to work with and work against a lot of times are, uh, it takes a little bit better physical ability to, to handle situations so I think it's important. Sammy has it been hard I mean I, and, and again we're going to talk on another show about you and your boxing career and I guess you're more disciplined because of the boxing but do you see it and you, you've been around now for nine years do you see some of the officers slacking off a little bit once they get out of the academy about their intense physical training I mean I, yeah, I think everybody pretty much does something but yeah I think a lot of them when they first get out they're looking forward to the break because it's, it's a, they expect a lot of discipline from self-discipline and they, they, they uh, I imagine that it's just, they're just tired after a while and they just want to take a little time off and get back to bad habits and old habits and it just takes a while to. to but the, to, but we, we do it provide. It can be dangerous. Them. Absolutely. And, and we provide, well, the FOP has the nice workout right, facilities yeah, and workout. also at the police department. There's some nice right, equipment downstairs right. for Plus people. Plus, we've got to the use. physical incentive days and that's always. Uh, nice to have uh, right. an extra day off, four days off up a year right. if you participate. Well, let's get back to the FTO program. Now, Alvin's been with you for how long now? This is day nine. Okay, and how many days will he be with you? He'll be here uh, for the first phase for a total of four shifts. It'll be 24 days. Now, he'll be with you for 24 days? Yes. And then he switches off to, another, to another FTO, probably in a different area of town, different clientele of uh Different people, yeah, different people, people that you have right. to work with. Right. Uh, what area are you all running now? We run the East, East District, and we're the wild car, so I've kind of mixed it up with him and take him different places. Um, I've run him to the project areas. I've run him to the better, better income areas, to the business areas, um, uh, things like that. And uh, when he gets done with me, he'll go to another officer. But I'll have him back at the fourth phase. That's pr purely an evaluation phase, or I don't do any participating. Now, that, explain that to the viewers. That's okay. how you all work that. By the time he comes back to me, he should be considered. And how many weeks will that be? Well, uh, I believe that'll be uh, 12, 16. 19, 18 weeks? Well, it's 16 weeks. 16 total. weeks. So he'll come back to me on the 14th week, and I'll have him for the, the last two weeks of that. And uh, pretty much, the, I'll be in civilian clothes. And uh, I believe that, well, that reason is so the uh, person that he's dealing with will see him as a primary officer, and I'll make to act as an observer, and I'll just sit there and uh, watch his performance, and I w won't have much to do with him at all. And the reason for that is, by, is because by the time he gets to the fourth phase, he should be at a, almost at a solo capacity level as an officer. Does that make you nervous, having somebody watching over your shoulder all the time? Not really, because right now I don't know how to be, quote unquote, a police officer. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm still in the learning and training phase, and uh, as uh, Officer Rivera mentioned before, officer survival and safety is uh, the primary aspect, and I'm just trying to learn as much as I possibly can, so it doesn't bother me at all. What made you want to be a police officer? I mean, has this been something you've wanted to do since you were a little boy? or? Well, I can't say that. It's just uh, I'm the type of person that likes to help other people. And um, I ultimately want to get into the juvenile sector of law and try to uh, help the kids. And so I felt that the easiest way to get there, reach my goal, is to start at the lowest level and try to learn and build my way up to the juvenile status. Hey, what kind of uh, effect do you think, well, I don't guess effect, <coughs> I, get, I don't think it would be a fair question what kind of effect have you had on kids, but have you had a lot of dealing with kids since you've come out of the academy? Well, not really, uh, not direct. Uh, I've, I've got two children of my, of my own, and um, as far as the public goes, you know, I haven't really spoke with a lot of kids, but I've, I've had a few 
uh, instances where we had to take juveniles in, and that, that really helped. And it, it still, it helps strengthen my desire to want to wanna deal with the children. To be a juvenile officer yes, someday. Sir. Well, that's good because we need people that, that are interested in And I think most officers are interested in, in children, uh, but to specialize in that, it takes a special person because I know, especially when you're dealing with juvenile sex crimes, you're dealing with crimes against kids, it really is tough. I mean, is, is that what your goal one day? You want to be a, a juvenile investigator or somebody that works just with the children? Yes, sir, primarily. Um, I feel that that dealing with adults is a lot different than children because if you, when you look at children today, you're looking at your future primarily. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to have a, a large impact and effect on, on uh, my kids' future. So by dealing with juveniles, uh, I can kind of uh, contribute to, to the future, per se. Well, that's great. Sammy, uh, what made you want to become a police officer? That was a long time ago. But well, it can't uh, be that long ago. Oh, You're not that me. old. No, but it, I, I'm, well, I'm kind of in, in uh, Alvin's frame of mind there. I, I had a sincere desire to get out there and, and to work with people and help people. And uh, and now that I have that ability and, and the uh, authority to go out there and take uh, myself into places where the average person can't go, I, I feel like I have more uh, uh, opportunities, is how I meant to say it, to uh, to uh, do something positive, especially like, like Alvin and I, and from Golden Gloves and and out here in East Knox, so a lot of people know me from boxing, and that's been a real contributor. I mean, it's been a real good uh, 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 thing out there as far as getting in people to uh, listen. Yeah. Have you had, uh, what, what would you, as you look back over your nine years, and by no means that's, that's not a career, I mean, that is a good length of time, but what is the most eye-opening thing that you've seen since you, I mean, the most eye-opening experience, I guess, you've had since you've been on the police department? Well, uh, I'd say the one that really got me shook up the worst was when my uh, officer, Jim Marino, mm -hmm. he was my former roommate, and we went to the academy together the day they had the bank robbery at Inskip, and he was shot. That made me realize that how dangerous this job is and mm -hmm. how close to home it hit. And uh, I really, I, I got scared that day, more for, well, for him, but also for all of us. I saw that, that that's the, is how serious that the, uh, uh, occupation we chose and absolutely any moment something could just change your life absolutely and you have to be prepared well I think that anybody that wears the uniform that says there's not a, a little fear in everybody every time you go out they'd be a fool yeah. because that fear keeps you safe mm -hmm. well gentlemen thanks a lot our 15 minutes is up I told you to go quick these guys are real nervous about this but I appreciate your time Alvin thanks Sammy appreciate you and we're gonna do uh, another show here coming up very shortly uh, with Sammy talking about his boxing career. Uh, we might even go a few rounds here. You never can tell. <laughs> but thanks for watching today. We'll see you next time. mentioned uh, playing for the senior citizens dances those are dances that we have in air rec centers um, and they're available to uh, these are senior citizens dances and they are available to anyone in Knoxville who wants to come out there again it is free and the band is playing um, at the rec centers for the dances and those dances are usually three and four hours long um, and three hours three hours long and uh, for information on the dances where you can just come sit and enjoy listen to the community recreation band I'm sure that you can be calling the same number um, right what is the number someone can call to get information or to be on the mailing list parks and recreation Knoxville parks and recreation 521-2090 okay that's great uh, Dr. Collins thank you for being with well, me today thank you and I look forward to uh, every concert especially the holiday concert coming up Thank you. Thank you.